Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. In a previous video I showed how anyone can modify the Commodore 64 to run on DC powered with some dirt cheap DC-DC converters from AliExpress. Even though that mod works quite well, it does require the removal of several original components and does not supply the CIA chips with the proper AC signal to drive the time of day clock, which is a niche feature of the C64 but a feature nonetheless. In this video we will undo this quick and dirty mod and replace it with a proper custom-made board I designed, which I decided to call the DC64. So let's assemble it and see if everything works. This board produces much cleaner voltages than the cheap converters I used previously, and only requires removing a single capacitor from the motherboard. Moreover, it includes a small microcontroller that produces the 50 or 60 Hz square wave necessary to drive the time of day clock. Here I'm installing a large Zener diode for over voltage protection, and a pin header used both for programming the microcontroller and to hook up the time of day clock. A good bath in isopropyl alcohol and the board is complete, which means we can now program the microcontroller through the dedicated pin header. The time of day clock is available on the same header used for programming and its frequency can be selected between 50 and 60 Hz with a jumper. The microcontroller reads the state of the jumper at startup and sets the desired frequency, which remains constant until the next power cycle. These Atmel microcontrollers run on an internal RC oscillator, so the clock frequency is some 2% off, but other than that it works as intended. Now it's time to revert my previous DC power mod and bring the C64 back to its original state. Like in my original mod, the new board requires an external 12V DC supply applied on pins 6 and 7 of the power connector that were originally assigned to the 9V AC supply. For convenience, I removed the original connector and replaced it with a barrel jack, but I could have also installed a new jack on the back of the machine. This is what the original circuit looks like. The new power board will simply replace C19 without the need to remove any other component from the motherboard, though I will remove C90 as it is part of a charge pump that becomes completely inactive thanks to this mod, so I didn't bother putting it back. The 15V output needs to be connected to the positive terminal of C88, while the 5V output goes to the positive terminal of C91 or C92. It's time for a smoke test. The two power indicator LEDs still turn on, which is a good sign. Looking at the generated voltages, we see that all unfiltered rails have a ripple well below 50mV peak to peak, which is more than low enough. This is a consequence of the fact that the DC-DC converters used in this new board switch at a much higher frequency than the cheap converters I used previously. Since everything seems to work, it is now time to connect the time of day clock. There are a few ways this could be hooked up, but I decided to feed it directly to pin 19 of the CIA chips. This pin is connected to one of the terminals of R37. However, we need to cut a trace in order not to cause a short circuit. We need to disconnect the trace that runs to the right of R37, which is driven by a comparator. The trace can simply be cut with a knife, but if you want to be able to revert this easily, I would recommend to cut the resistor pad instead, which will allow to reconnect the trace with a ball of solder. Now it's only a matter of running a wire from the power supply board to R37. I went with a coaxial cable to shield the signal, but I decided to ground it only on the power supply board to avoid ground loops. I was a bit worried that these tiny converters I used would overheat, however this doesn't seem to be the case, 
as in open air both converters and inductors rise less than 10 degrees above room temperature. After some research I found a simple program that I can load from tape that keeps track of time using the time of day clock, which I used to verify that my implementation was in fact correct. At this point I would like to turn this board into a commercial product as soon as possible, though I'm still figuring out the legal framework to be able to do so. In the meantime please feel free to reach out down in the comments or over on Discord, or perhaps consider supporting this and other projects on Patreon. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting, thanks again for watching and see you all next time.